Hi, Norman with iSave Tractors. Welcome to part three of our Simplicity 4040 Power Max project. Before we get to the video, I just want to give you a quick reminder to be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for daily content. We are also will be publishing weekly articles to our website, isavetractors.com. These articles are going to range from everything from how-tos to engine science to general articles about garden tractors and everything small engine related. So please check that out. With that being said, let's go to the video. Okay, now that that dashboard piece is off the tractor, let's go back to that rear PTO shaft that we had to take to the machine shop to get it repaired. If you remember, the PTO shaft used to look like this. It was really worn. The keyway was really destroyed and damaged. This is what it looks like now. As you can see, this PTO shaft looks almost brand new. The machine shop welded it back up and then recut the keyway. It looks great. Now it's time to reassemble this rear PTO setup. First, I've got to screw on the electromagnetic clutch to the rear of the shaft. Unfortunately, I was not paying attention to my camera, and some of it is now out of frame. I apologize about that. This, is, uh, this rear electromagnetic clutch is held on to the PTO shaft with just four little uh, Allen head screws that I'm screwing in here. That blue box that you see at the center of the table, that's a replacement for that bearing that I cut off in episode one. I just took the bearing code that was on the actual bearing itself. I typed that into Google, and that's how I located that bearing. So that tapping sound you just heard in the background was me tapping a steel key into a keyway that's at the rear of the shaft. That keyway is what attaches to that rear hub that I just slid on there. That rear hub is then attached to the gear set that's in the actual transmission. So I encountered a problem with that replacement bearing I purchased. I purchased the exact same bearing as the bearing I cut off in episode one. However, it does not fit into the bearing flanges. It is just barely too big. My solution is to take an angle grinder and cut little relief cuts into the bearing flanges. And then I'm going to press that bearing into the flange. That flange, due to the little recess cuts I made, will slightly expand to let the bearing fit into the flanges, yet retain the proper amount of friction to keep that outer race from moving.
Now here I am taking off the wheel hubs and the wheel spindles. Oh yeah? Now it's time to uh, remove and replace the old bearings and oil seals. That little jar of uh, bearing grease that you see in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, that's a bearing packing tool. You're going to see me use that in a moment. That's a gr great tool for forcing new grease uh, into the tapered wheel bearings. If you're, you, if you're repacking bearings, it will also help you push out the old grease, so it's a really handy tool. Highly recommend it. Just look at the front wheel spindle on this tractor. Look how huge that is. Uh, the wheel spindle diameter that the hubs ride on is one inch in diameter, so it is plenty strong to take a lot of weight on the front end. Uh, here I am just cleaning up some of the old dirt and grease that's been stuck on this spindle. You'll find that when you're working on these old tractors, 90% of what you do is pretty much just cleaning up old grime and debris off of everything.
Looks like now is a good time to cue in some music so you don't hear the conversation between my wife and I. Here goes. Time to put the tires on. Now, these tires look awesome, right? However, they were a really big pain in the butt to install onto the rim. Now, normally I can install front tractor tires myself with my own tire tools. Uh, you can see several videos of that on our channel. However, these tires I could not mount after several tries. So I took it to a tire place down the road from me, and they had trouble... Uh, getting the beads to seat on this. It took them several days. They used every trick in the book they could get. They could not get it seated. We eventually put a tube in the tire and expanded it, and it seats well enough for now. So I am anticipating that once I put weight on the tractor and start rolling this around, everything's going to be uh, seat nicely. As you can see, the tires look fine, uh, but these tires definitely gave us a little bit of trouble. Now these tires, these rear tires, are equally awesome, and they were easy to put on. Now here I am just lubricating uh, both the hub and the lug nuts themselves with some WD-40 just to help them slide through the threads a little bit easier. Now here I am eyeballing where the holes are in the wheel in relation to the wheel hub. Uh, and then I'm using a hydraulic jack that's positioned behind the tractor, and I'm slowly lifting the tractor into place. That way, I don't have to hold up this, like, 50-pound tire uh, while trying to screw the threads in.
Well, that concludes part three of our Simplicity 4040 Power Max project. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking for any of the best high-quality aftermarket parts for your vintage small engines, like your old Kohler K-Series, KT Twin Series, Magnum Series, Tecumseh HH, Wisconsin, Briggs & Stratton Cast Iron, please check us out online, isavetractors.com. We are the world's leading developers and the best high-quality aftermarket parts for your old small garden tractors. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.